Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at a retro review, so an older Star Wars figure, this time from Episode 1. Um, I think it's been a little bit since I've done an Episode 1 figure, and this is actually one that I don't have. Um, I've kind of reached the point where I think I have most of the Episode 1 characters, and I tend to review some variants or different costume characters or what have you. Um, I say that, and I might be wrong, but um, this is one that I definitely have never owned, and it is Rune Hako. Hako, Hako, um, and I got it for my birthday from my mom. So the card is not in the best shape, as you can probably tell. It is quite bent and warped, but that is okay because this channel is here to open up these figures um, for the most part. So um, obviously we have the episode one packaging with um, Darth Maul in the corner, a very iconic looking Star Wars packaging. I really like it. Um, it doesn't get old for me. I just love the multicolor and the use of Darth Maul. That was a smart choice on Hasbro's part. Episode one, you get a um, in-movie picture of the... He's a Separatist. So, of the Separatist. And he's like a... Are they called like Nemoidians? Nim something like that? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and then it comes with a ComTech um, chip, which was... Yeah, it's been a while since I've reviewed an episode one figure because I can't remember the last time I opened one with a ComTech chip. So, um, yes. It comes with that. You're supposed to, on the back, they've got a whole panel of it. You're supposed to use it with the reader that looks like uh, Qui-Gon's communicator, but large form, and the, the character speaks. And I've actually done a video over the communicator and using some of the different chips and the technology behind it. They had a good idea, but it, it was very bad. They sound very bad because it had the way it had to be compressed. Um, but it's cool that it comes with it. Might have been fun for the day. Um, but that's the accessory kind of that you get with it. Slash stand. Um, and then obviously you get a little bit of a, a bio for, um, it just looks like, it just looks like Star Wars Episode One. Here is the bio for the character up here. Very small. But there's a lot to look at. You get 10 Jedi Master Points, and then here is the wave of figures. And from that wave, well, I definitely don't have that Yoda. I have some of the figures, but not all of them. So I stand corrected. I, I still don't have all of these. And this is just one wave anyway. So anyways, um, enough of me rambling. I'm going to go ahead and open this figure and we're going to take a closer look at him. Alrighty, here is our Separatist and I've already forgot his name, so forgive me. Actually, it's on the back of here. I can cheat. Rune Hako. So before we get into Rune Hako, I'm going to take you a look at the accessory that he comes with. In this case, it is just the ComTech chip reader, which doubles as a stand. I always used to use these um, for figures that would fall down, especially when I was playing with them. If they couldn't stand up, I'd stick them on this stand. Overall, I really like the idea of these. I like the translucent, which was really popular for some reason in the 90s, and I still like translucent stuff. Um, but you have a picture that's kind of, it's kind of foily or holographic of the character, which is really nice if you can't remember who goes, whose stand it belongs to, the pictures on there, as well as the back um, with the name and his standing as a character in the series. So he's a separatist. So this is fantastic for kids who maybe couldn't remember their character's names after you tore up the package and threw it away. Um, it kind of saves everything and you can match the figure to the stand. I really like that idea. Um, I don't know if we could ever do it so well again um, because these are, to, in my knowledge, the only figures uh, only figure stands that come with the picture of the figure and I think that that was done because it was important to make sure you matched it up because if you held this over the ComTech reader obviously it's going to read without the figure and you could put like Qui-Gon on this base and he would sound like this guy um, but here is the little microchip that works with the reader that it reads I feel like I'm saying read a lot um, it does have a Hasbro carved in here in 1999 at the top but that's it for the stand I've always kind of liked these stands for some reason and there's a hole that you can like put them on like a chain and keep them together if you want and he's number 34 it looks like and I guess really I I guess I actually stand corrected here he's not a separatist he's part of the trade federation he's a viceroy so he is a Nemoidian. yay okay I got that right but yeah he's a trade viceroy and later they become separatists I think so all right, and here he is. This is another instance where we get kind of a background character and a non-action figure. For me, as a collector, this is fantastic. For a kid playing with it, there's not a whole lot of stuff to do. You could cut him down with another Jedi, which I guess it has play value, but this guy doesn't have a whole lot of articulation, and he isn't a bad guy or a good guy that really does anything other than stand around. Um, that being said, I'm glad that they make it. I miss the days where they used to make kind of odd, obscure characters like this. Um, and overall, the face 
painting on this is really, really good. Hopefully you can see it, but in my opinion, it looks fantastic for 19.99. It's very, very, very good. And I love his hat. It looks good. This figure isn't sticky, which is nice. And then you can see the, the skin on the back. So looks really, really good overall. You can see his hands there, which is another, they match the skin tone well. And then he's wearing these long robes that look like they're kind of like a brown and green. It's a nice color scheme very episode one-esque and so as I was talking about the articulation this guy his head can move side to side his arms can move up and down and his forearms can move back and forth so this is weird this is uber creepy but you can't quite arrest him if his hands came oh they do never mind you could actually put this guy in manacles if you wanted to if you wanted to like pretend you're arresting him because I know that there was a Luke Skywalker from like the legacy or saga collection some years ago that came with manacles um, but yeah, he'd be a good one to do that with. Um, overall, his articulation is fine for the time. Um, I think his legs do move up and down, but you can't do anything past the robes because they're a soft plastic. Um, he stands, he stands well. Yeah, he stands perfect. And you can kind of put his arms in a couple different poses. I just did there on accident, kind of crossed his arms. And overall, he's a nice background stand-in character because, I mean, you have Darth Maul, but you gotta have the Trade Federation if you're gonna be, like, doing a diorama. Um, it just makes for some good bad guys that don't necessarily have to have the action, but just as filler. Um, so, that's basically him. He's pretty simple, but a nice figure to add to the collection. I'm really happy to have him, as strange as it may be. Um, I've just really been enjoying and admiring and appreciating the old Star Wars figures. Um, if you will. So, um, very cool figure. Let me know what you think in the comments below, guys. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye.